it makes sense to start with a definition of a smart contract. Uh, in its essence, smart contract is a set of commands or code deployed to a blockchain network. And the definition is quite short, but it is not too descriptive. So let's instead think about it from a different perspective. Uh, I distinguish four features smart contracts are associated with, and these are decentralization, immutability, transparency, and deterministic nature. So I will give you an example or a couple of examples, which should tell you more about what exactly these mean. So imagine you want to purchase a Euro bus tour. So you approach to buy a ticket and you get offered to insure your trip by paying some extra funds. You agree. A few days pass and the tour actually gets cancelled. And at first you feel sad that you won't get to travel, but you also think to yourself, good thing I considered all the possible outcomes and insured my ticket. Uh, logically, you reach out to the tour operator and ask to make, uh, get your money back. Uh, in some time they respond, saying something like, we are sorry to inform you, but your case is quite unique and we won't be able to cover it. Or a more optimistic scenario, where you actually do get your money back, but you can get it in hours or days, or months, and that is the exact point when you realize that you have no actual control over this kind of situations. And the reason for this is that in its nature, there is a centralized entity, which is in this case supposed to pay you the money, and it is not actually motivated to do so, because that would technically mean a loss to them. So if there is a way around it, they will try to look for it. Uh, or not going far back from here, uh, when you are paying for your ticket, you use your bank. So if you go to your banking app, you can look at your operation history and you will see a transaction. It will say something like a transfer of $150 from your wallet to the wallet of the recipient. But if you actually think about this, what you are seeing there are just numbers because you have no actual proof or way of knowing or controlling if there are some funds backing these numbers. And when you initiate a transfer in your banking account, you are usually 99.9% .9 sure that the money are going to arrive at the destination you chose. But the point is that 99.9 uh, .9 is still probabilistic and not deterministic. And this 0.1% difference is actually great in our case because it creates, if an ecosystem is based uh, on 100% probabilities of interactions being successful, we can opt not to even consider the possibilities of some of the outcomes being deviant from what was expected. So let's now imagine all of these use cases, but based on smart contracts instead. Now, we don't have a centralized entity, which is somehow able to influence the outcome of our deal. We don't trust anyone. The only thing we trust is code. And code at that is also immutable. Because at the time of the agreement, at the time the contract was deployed, the code is going to stay the same for days, months and years. Because when developer presses a button deploy, whatever was in the code is going to stay the same way unchained. Uh, although it needs to be noted here, there is a way around this thing, allowing the contracts to be updatable. Uh, it's upgradable proxy pattern. And it is not necessarily bad. Now, don't get me wrong. It is bad in the long run because it eliminates this point of immutability I have just described. And we are back to the point when we have to trust, trust some entity or some person. Uh, but you also need to consider that smart contracts and the industry in general is relatively new. So we simply haven't yet had time to cover all the best practices that would cover all the possible security breaches. And also as a separate point, transparency. So whatever happens on chain, stays on chain. Whatever data was once processed 
by a smart contract uh, can be accounted for and traced back. And this is what creates the data consistency, which allows for solutions like chain supply management to be based on smart contract ecosystem. So to summarize all of it, smart contracts are decentralized because there is no centralized entity which can somehow influence the outcome of the deal. Uh, at the time of taking this deal, we can expect to be 100% sure that the outcome of the deal can be based on our expectations solely. So if we take a good look at the code, one single inspection, we can build our judgment and that is what we are going to be trusting. Then the code of smart contract is immutable. Whatever code, whatever code was prior to developer pressing the button deploy is going to stay the same way on chain. Any data that is going through the smart contract can be traced back and accounted for. And the ideological thing about everything being deterministic and immutable, uh, and immutable runs deep into the technical base of blockchain. So now that we have talked about features, it makes sense to talk about limitations. The goal of Camino Network is to create a network for the travel industry of the future. And this network should be grand, scalable, and interoperable. And when we are thinking about existing solutions like Ethereum, for example, the block throughput, gas cost, and transaction speed that are present there wouldn't exactly be called the best base for such network. Besides that, we have a lot of industry branches which are quite resistant to adopting blockchain technology because of security considerations, uh, and reasonably so. Think of boarding a plane. The amount of processes that need to happen to sustain the security uh, simply won't allow us to easily adopt existing blockchain solutions. What Camino offers? The solutions I just described are generalized. They serve a general purpose. And Camino takes a tailored, flexible, and industry-specific approach. By combining the Avalanche technical base and a consensus mechanism which allows for distributing the influence on the state of the network between networks direct participants, it not only improves the block throughput, block capacity, transaction speed and transaction cost, but also introduces a way to control them and keep them in range, in range <coughs> that would allow for networks like this to prosper. <coughs> and all of this is achieved not by sacrificing security, but by improving upon it, by introducing security tools like know your customer, know your business verification. Uh, there is also one more barrier which stops us from creating this network of our dreams. And running back to the example, like I was talking about smart contracts and how having all of this infrastructure hosted on them would make it all better. While it is true, uh, we also need to <coughs> have parts of the deal the assets that are underlying in the contracts to be present and visible to smart contracts. So thinking about an example with insurance, in order to have our ticket insured, we need to have ticket and the money, which we are going to be giving back to the user, present, visible and accessible by smart contract. And while a lot of popular smart contract solutions you must have heard of are actually implications on that, uh, Camino creates a very interesting environment to have a new solution. So while we said before that Camino is a grand and scalable ecosystem, it is also somewhat comfy, allowing for new platform for collaborations. And by giving this platform for collaborations, we create value. And value is the key to creating, to achieving digitalization or tokenization. Which, which is what actually is solving this issue. So that is it for the theoretical part. And I'll first tell you like, what is the whole reason behind it? Why was I talking about it? Uh, so I want you to understand uh, how Camino network is special, what features are there and how you can best leverage it. So you now know what solutions you need to be looking into.